Greetings fellow makers, welcome down to the shop. I'm Bill and today I'm gonna show you how I made Woo Thread. That's right, to help spread the word for Skyrim Special Edition coming out on October 28th, Bethesda came to us to help teach you guys how to build some of the most epic props and costumes from Skyrim. Which is of course one of our very favorite games. This is one of them. This is Wuthrad, the legendary two-handed battle axe, and I'm gonna show you how I made it. In the description of this video, you will find a list of all the tools and materials that I used, as well as free blueprints, so that you can give it a try yourself. All right, follow along. Let's build this thing. I decided to branch out a little bit with this project and build it out of Warbla. Ha, made you look. I made it out of foam, of course. I started by printing, taping together, and cutting out my template. The first parts that we built were using a 10 millimeter thick foam. We cut out some rectangles, just a little bit bigger than our template. We made six of them, three for each side of the axe head. Three pieces of this foam stacked up would accommodate the thickness of the PVC pipe I used for the handle. If you're using floor mats, you can get two pieces out of one floor mat. All of these layers were laminated together using a contact cement. I would brush a little bit of contact cement on either side of each piece of foam. And then once it dried about five minutes later, I would sandwich it together. I repeated this until I had two big pieces of foam, each three pieces of foam thick. Again, if you're using floor mats, you'll wanna take off as much of the textured side as possible with a sanding tool like your rotary tool to ensure good adhesion between the layers. From these hunks of foam, I cut out the blades. I pinned the template down to each hunk of the foam and trace the outline using a silver Sharpie. Then I got to cutting it out with a very sharp knife. I like to sharpen the blade every couple of minutes when I'm doing this kind of work to make sure I get very clean cuts. The midline was cut first, making sure it was perpendicular to the cutting mat. Then I carved away the rest of the outline of the battle ax. Be sure to keep any of those big scraps that you have, they can be very useful. Now this is a fairly tedious process, but patience pays off. And don't worry if some of those edges are a little bit rough, those will get cleaned up later when we do some of the sculpting. Also, if you've got a bandsaw or a scroll saw at home, go ahead and just use those. They're way faster and way cleaner. I cut out the two blade halves and then I cut out an area between them. This is where that PVC pipe is gonna go. Once I had room for the pipe, the surfaces between the two halves of the blades were covered in contact cement, allowed to dry, and then stuck together. I planned on having a break in the handle so that I could take the whole thing apart for travel. So I trimmed my PVC pipe several inches from the bottom of the axe head, about five or six. Then I glued in a PVC coupler to the end to attach that to the rest of the handle later. The PVC pipe was then sanded to prepare for gluing. I also trimmed some more of the 10 millimeter foam to cover the pipe. Everything got glued up in one fell swoop. This was to attach the pipe to the ax head and to cover the pipe. All in one go, everything got attached. The pipe got stuck to the inside of the ax head and then the entire thing got covered up using those 10 millimeter thick sheets that we cut out earlier. Extra parts of those sheets were trimmed away to fit the contour of the side of the ax. I also started trimming away some of the areas that would smooth out the transition between the foam layers. In fact, I trimmed away a lot of foam using that sharp knife, especially large areas like the bevels on the business end of the ax. This was done to keep from having to sand all of this material away later. Then it was time to start doing some sculpting. This is a code word for sanding. Keep in mind that with this type of work, you generate a lot of dust and you do not want to breathe it. So make sure that you're wearing the proper eye protection. And of course, at least a dust mask respirator if you got it. You could use your shop vac to make sure that dust doesn't go everywhere or if you wanna be industrious, you could just work outside. Using my rotary tool and a sanding drum, I started sculpting the edges of my foam ax. This was done as a first pass to round over all the edges and clean up all the cut lines. Using different sized sanding drums, I cleaned up the edges and smoothed out the transition between the layers of the foam. I also used a tapered grinding bit to really smooth out the areas that have been chewed up by the sanding drums. 
With the surface prepared, I started sculpting the face into the weapon. This was the most challenging part for me. The first attempt was done using a paint marker to copy the design from my template by hand. This worked out all right, and I used that grinding bit in the rotary tool to do lots of tedious hand sculpting. I also tried using a ballpoint pen, which actually showed up pretty well into dark foam and gave me a lot more control than the paint pen. You could also go in using a smaller cutting bit to get even finer detail. This was all cleaned up using that grinding bit to get rid of some of that fuzziness. It ended up with a pretty good looking final product. But I wanted to try something else. I wanted to try a hot knife or a soldering iron to cut in some of that detail. If you're gonna do this, definitely work in a well ventilated area and definitely wear a respirator. You will be melting the foam and you don't wanna breathe it in. I like this a lot. The tip of the hot knife allowed for some really fine control, especially in areas like the teeth. I gave the hot knife a go on some of the larger areas and I ended up liking it a lot. So I finished the rest of the designs on the ax head using a hot knife with a pointy bit for the sharp edges and details and a rounded off bit to melt down some of the larger areas. Going between these two tips, I was able to carve out all of the creepy face on Woo Thread, and I was pretty happy with the results. I'll be totally honest here, I'm not incredibly comfortable with more organic sculpting like this, but I am glad that I challenged myself. The last bit of sculpting was the roughed up texture on the edge of the blade, also done with a hot knife. I went back over everything with that grinding bit in the rotary tool to tidy up everything and also add a little bit of texture to any of the remaining flat areas. To complete the handle portion, I wrapped a piece of two millimeter thick foam around the area around the PVC coupler. Then I wrapped some six millimeter foam around the coupler to completely hide it. The edges of this piece were beveled with a rotary tool and then I carved in some wood grain using that incredibly handy hot knife. There's some bands and a design on this side of the handle that I made using more of that two millimeter craft foam. I cut some strips for the bands and I used the blueprint cut out to make a stencil for the symbol. These pieces were all glued to the wooden handle parts using super glue. I like using super glue for small parts because it's much quicker than using contact cement. That was the last detail on the ax head and it was ready for finishing. So. I heat sealed the entire surface of the foam using a blowtorch, but if you have a heat gun, that will do. I also made a base to hold the ax head upright for painting using more PVC fittings. The foam was then sealed with six good layers of Plasti Dip. I went with Plasti Dip because it's a really fast and convenient way to protect the foam and prepare for paint. But there are many ways to seal foam. In fact, we just did a video We'll have a link below, go check that out. Plasti Dip was warmed up in a bucket of hot water for about 10 minutes, then I got to spraying. I went with white at first because I didn't have a lot of black on hand, so I just built up a bunch of layers in white. Then I went back to my can of black and finished it off with that. This was a nice dark base color for my paint job. Now, while that was drying, I also knocked out the rest of the handle. It was done in a similar way as the smaller portion of the handle on the ax head. I trimmed the PVC pipe to length so that it would just fit in my luggage and I gave it all a good sanding. Using contact cement, I wrapped more two millimeter foam around the whole thing. Using the blueprint as a guide, I left a bare PVC part at the bottom to attach the pommel. This part was wrapped in six millimeter foam. Using scraps from the ax head, I told you we'd use those. I sandwiched another layer on top of it to make it thick enough for the pommel. Then I traced on the pommel shape and roughly carved it out with my knife. This was then contact cemented to the bottom of the handle. After shaping it a bit more with the knife, I took the pommel to the rotary tool and did the rest of the shaping, just like we did with the ax head. More shaping on the pommel got it ready for finishing, including adding all of the wood grain and details with a hot knife. Then the handle was sealed, again with Plasti Dip. This Plasti Dip is a really good primer for painting and you can just brush acrylic paints right on top of it. Using reference images from Skyrim, I started laying on my paint. Using a radial brush, I did a layer of haphazard bright silver. I wasn't trying to cover everything, I just wanted to add a little bit of shine and a little bit of texture. I did the same thing with some copper paints. This was to warm up the tone a little bit. The handle was done with just some brown paints to simulate a wood finish, but I went over with a variety of tones to try and enhance the wood grain a little bit. The bands and the symbol were colored with more of that silver and copper paint, making them stand out nicely against the wood. <laughs> well, I can fix that. When I was happy with all of these base colors, I sealed everything with some spray varnish. This dries really fast, it's 
flexible, and it protects the paint from the weathering that I was about to do. I went super basic on the weathering for this build. Since I carved in all of that texture, I let it work for me. Using black, brown, and rust colored acrylics, I filled in all of the deep crevices with paint and then wiped most of it away with a damp cloth. This does a lot to add some color and some contrast to the finish of the axe. The same was done on the wooden handle. The last touch was to call out some of the highlights on the axe and went back over the edges with more of that silver paint. Again, with that crappy old brush. This was done especially on the sharp edges where this axe would see a lot of action. This added some more bright contrast to the edge of the axe. Finally, I added a little bit of silver to the metallic bands on the axe handle. And that was the last touch on the entire build. There you go. A durable and lightweight Wu Thread two-handed axe that would be the perfect complement to any Skyrim costume. Which is perfect because we aren't done making things from Skyrim. That's right. Look for more tutorials coming at you from the world of Tamriel as we climb closer and closer to October 28th and the release of Skyrim Special Edition. Do you already have your own Skyrim props and costumes? Well, Bethesda wants to see them. Please share them all over the internet with at Elder Scrolls using the hashtag Skyrim Memories. Thank you so much to Bethesda for coming to us with this project to bring to you guys. I hope you challenge yourself like I challenge myself and give this build a try. Like I said, all the tools, materials, and free blueprints are listed in the description of this video. Thanks so much for watching. If you guys have any questions about this build, let me know down in the comments. I do my best to get back to as many of those as I can. We've also got some more videos that feature Skyrim. For example, the Draugr helmet here. You want to know how we did those creepy eyes? We got a video for that. Check that out when you're done with this one. Of course, everything else you want to know about making props and costumes using EVA foam can be found on our website at punishprops.com slash foamsmithing. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Like I said, we've got more Skyrim tutorial videos coming and you don't want to miss them. That's all for today. Thank you again for watching and we'll see you guys in Whiterun.